Hi, hey, how are you, Carl? Good to uh, see you and good to be here in Phoenix at the Smead Investor Oasis. And I'm joined by Vicki Holub, the CEO and president of Occidental Petroleum. Vicki, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Great to be here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the oil markets. I don't want to linger too much okay. there and what's going on in the Middle East in the Red Sea. Uh, you, Occidental, are not a big footprint in that part of the world. You're more domestic-oriented. Uh, but obviously you have a perspective on what's going on there. What is happening? How is it affecting the oil market? And what are the risks? Yeah, we do have operations in Abu Dhabi and Oman um, and Algeria. So we, we are always conscious of what's going on um, everywhere around the world. But right now, what we're seeing at this point, and I say at this point because... Who knows, it could escalate at some, at some time in the future. But right now, the Red Sea interruptions are really just that. They're, they're causing rerouting of um, ships. They're causing ship, um, shipping rates to go up. Uh, so it's more of a, um, a disruption in, in, um, in terms of delivery than it is in terms of price. Now, price um, right now in the near term is, uh, is really driven down by oversupply. So that's, that's more pressure on, um, on oil, and it's overcoming the threat of what's happening in the Middle East because the reality is that in real time, um, we, have, we, we can see the data now. Everybody's talking about oil prices, you know, 20 years ago would have been above 100. Well, 20 years ago, we couldn't see where all the ships were. We couldn't see what was happening, and so we didn't have this real-time data that tells us that, yeah, ships are... Are managing to work now out I can get it on my app on exactly. my phone. I can look and see where the ships are. It's a, exactly, and so it's the the oversupply is having more of an influence on price than than the geopolitical. Is risk. the market then out of balance? The market is out, out of balance right now, but again, this is a short term so, uh, demand issue, but it's going to be a long term supply issue because um, if you look at resources that have been discovered in the world. 97% of the resources that we're producing today were discovered in the 20th century. And in the last 10 years, we've really uh, replaced less than 50% of the oil we're producing. All the big fields have, have been found. So if you take the 20 largest fields in the world, 97% of the volume from those was discovered uh, before 2000. And mm -hmm. so we're in a situation now where uh, in a couple of years' time, we're going to be very short on supply, so the, the situation is going to flip. And what OPEC has tried to do is balance the markets, OPEC Plus and, and Prince Abdul Aziz. They've tried to balance the market in the near term so that we don't have all this volatility. Right. Uh, but, but it's going to become a problem by the end of uh, 2025. Well, let me move on, if I might, to some of the acquisition that you did uh, last, uh, well, last December of Crown Rock, $12 billion. Uh, on the one hand, you've been paying down debt uh, and, and, and assiduously from the Anadarko uh, mm -hmm. acquisition, which was criticized at the time. There was a time when it was a, a, a wobbly one, I suppose, but it has been vindicated, obviously. Uh, you've been paying down debt, but here you're taking on more debt. Talk to me about the debt posture uh, of the company, what you are divesting, and, and, and on the one hand, you're paying down debt. On the other hand, you're borrowing $9 billion or something like that to take on Crown Rock in the, a big Permian producer. Yeah, what we didn't want to do is dilute our shareholders by issuing shares. We feel like right now our shares are way undervalued, so it wouldn't be the right time to, to make any kind of acquisition with our shares. And what we're doing with the debt is we, we have onshore U.S. a significant volume of inventory. And some of that inventory, though, is better in the hands of others because it uh, depends on where it is within the basin. Um, so uh, we have some inventory that for us is 15 years out in terms of development. So the reason we can do this and raise debt is we can sell that longer term inventory and actually convert that value, which is almost zero that far out, to real value today by purchasing um, the Crown Rock assets.